Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the National Hurricane Center. I'm Dr. Rick Nabb, the director here. Just in case you didn't know, we actually share this facility with the local forecast office for South Florida in the Miami area. And they are in this part of the building and, and back to the northeastern side. Their operations area is right around the corner. So we're more than just about hurricanes here. We are dealing with a tropical storm that we're forecasting to become a hurricane. Hurricane warnings up for uh, the Florida Big Bend area really is looking a lot more impressive on satellite imagery than it did this time yesterday. Hopefully everybody is taking this very seriously. I want to give you a little bit of an inside look at how we are constructing the forecasts and the warnings and the advisories for Hermine. And there's a lot more that goes into it than you might realize. But before we go talk about storm surge and aircraft data, I want to take you through our tropical analysis and forecast branch. This is hurricane operations. This is where the hurricane specialist unit is functioning. And this is just one of the operations areas here at NHC. We actually are two centers in one. The hurricane specialist unit here, but we also have our tropical analysis and forecast branch, TAF B. So let me take you right across the hallway. And this branch is actually operating 365, 24 seven. So there's always something going on at NHC. We're always busy. This is just a little bit different kind of a day because we have a landfall threat from a tropical storm. But here in the tropical analysis and forecast branch, we have a number of forecasters who are on duty issuing critical forecasts and warnings for offshore waters and high seas area, millions of square miles in the Atlantic, Gulf, Caribbean, and Eastern Pacific. And the chief of TAFB, this is Mr. Hugh Cobb. He is at the Atlantic desk today. I want to share with our Periscope audience, Hugh, how we handle the marine forecasting aspect of a system like Hermine. Well, uh, we are now producing gridded marine forecasts uh, from a gridded database uh, using the Tropical Cyclone Marine Tool, which uh, provides the wind speed radii for 34, 50, and 64 knot winds. Uh, this is the current depiction of Tropical Storm Hermine. And as I flip through this, you can see the storm uh, increases the hurricane force, and you can see the wind fields, the various wind fields, as they move into the coastal waters area of North Florida. Now, it's really a significant change here in TAFB in the last two years that we've gone to gridded forecast paradigm, just like the local forecast offices. So talk about how TAFB and the WFOs collaborate. Well, uh, what we have is uh, an intersite coordination tool uh, where we can see the wind fields produced by the coastal forecast offices uh, against our wind fields. And they're, they're a pretty close match. Um, as you can see, you can, uh, the storm, as it comes ashore, you can see we have the area of 50 knot winds. Uh, and this is the forecast office in Tallahassee and the forecast office in Tampa. And then the pink areas indicate 34 knot winds. Uh, and this is a, an 18 hour <laughs> forecast. And then you can see as the storm moves inland, uh, the higher winds go inland as well. So not so only are we issuing warnings for people on land, we're trying to keep ships out of harm's way as well. Absolutely. That's the mission here in TAFB. Thanks, Hugh, so much. We'll let them get back to work. It's a busy day for the operational forecasters. Now, you've seen this new prototype storm surge watch warning and our new operational potential storm surge flooding map. Where is all that coming from? Who's generating that? Let me introduce you to some of these folks. This is what, kind of what we call our fishbowl back here. It's right adjacent to TAFB operations, and this is where our storm surge unit has been collaborating with the local forecast offices. Jamie Rome here in the purple shirt is our leader of our storm surge unit, and we have a collection of experts here from our storm surge unit. You wouldn't believe how talented these folks are in so many different disciplines, not just meteorology geeks like me. So Jamie, take us through how we are collaborating in a new, exciting way, historic week, really, for how we are doing storm surge products and warnings with our local forecast office colleagues. This storm is a, is a new era in so many ways. Uh, not only the high resolution potential storm surge flooding graphic, which is now operational, but our ability to collaborate with the Weather Service forecast offices uh, via new technology. And you can see that right behind us here. This is the, the wind platform that we would use to work with uh, a WFO on uh, proposed um, watches and warning. In this case, a, the prototype storm surge watch and warning. Um, this is just, this is, you're seeing it um, a few hours ago. You would have seen this in live action. And what's really been interesting today, and we're going to go to the Aircraft Reconnaissance Coordination Office in just a moment, but I want to remind everybody how there is a direct connection between the data collected from the aircraft 
and keeping you safe. And the way you connect the dots today is the aircraft found that the 34 knot, the tropical storm force winds extended farther to the east than previously anticipated. That led to our specialists issuing a special advisory, a tropical storm warning was extended farther down the west coast of Florida, and that fed into what you guys here in the storm surge unit were assessing was the potential in the Tampa Bay area, and then we talked with the WFOs, and how did that play out? Well, so we've got, we've really got everything that we need here. Um, we've got the hurricane specialist talking to us about what they're seeing on the aircraft, and we can respond instantly to that information, literally within minutes or seconds. Um, we also have the tropical analysis and forecast branch right behind you who can feed us wave information, which will be important for, for coastal uh, forecasting as well. And we were chatting directly with forecasters on the floor of the operations areas in the local forecast offices. And again, this is a prototype storm surge watch and warning product that has been issued for the first time during Hermine. Jamie, everybody in the storm surge unit, thank you so much for everything you've done this week. And it's not just the last couple days that they have shined, it's been the years getting us to this point. So let's head over to the Aircraft Reconnaissance Office. I'm going to take you down the innards of the National Hurricane Center down the hallway here. And this is where a lot of our staff uh, do a lot of their work when they're not on the operations floor. And we're heading back down the west side of the building. Turnpike is right behind me. <laughs> and <laughs> TAF B and the Hurricane Specialist Unit are right here to the left. Got some of our computer programmers have the office in here. By the way, that's where our ham radio station is, WX4NHC. Might be the only way you hear from us if we're hit by a hurricane here at NHC. So let's go hang a right here. And this is directly across from hurricane operations this way. And to our left here, or to my left anyway, is uh, CARCA, Chief Aerial Reconnaissance Coordination, All Hurricanes. And the chief of that unit is John Pavone. John is going to be our lightning rod here for making sure we're getting in a timely manner aircraft data from the Air Force and NOAA's been out there during this event too. So John, thanks so much for allowing us to barge in here on a busy day. No but problem. what we're talking about to folks out there watching us on Periscope is how there's a direct connection between the aircraft data and getting warnings out there in a timely manner and updating storm surge values. That's what happened today when they found the winds farther out to the east. So who's flying out there today? Well, the Air Force just uh, is about ready to make a third pitch. Coming in from the uh, southeast, uh, 105, you know, 20 mile leg actually, and uh, they're going to pitch it right in here. Uh, it's moving right along with their forecast speed. Right, and we fly more frequently when we have a landfall threat, a warning situation like this. And it's not just the coordination that happens in real time when the plane is out there. We coordinate with John and his colleagues here in Karka days in advance to plan ahead for what the potential aircraft needs might be. So it is really a team effort with these Air Force folks, along with our uh, federal employees and contractors here at the Hurricane Center who issue the forecast. And I'll let you just take a quick peek. I didn't tell them I was coming, but we'll try not to surprise them. In just a few minutes, I'm going to be walking into the FEMA Hurricane Liaison Team Room, where we will do a coordination call with uh, one of the FEMA regions. And we talk with the states and the FEMA regions, and occasionally with uh, the President of the United States from this room. We did so during events like Sandy in the past. So I have to get off this Periscope broadcast because if I'm not in this room in five minutes, I'm late for an emergency management briefing. That wouldn't be a good thing. So thank you so much for joining us today. Ultimately, why are we doing all this? Why are the talented, dedicated people here at the Hurricane Center doing everything that I've shown you today? That's because we want you to survive the storm and recover in the aftermath. So if you're told to evacuate in advance of the storm surge that is impacting the Florida Big Bend area today, you get out. Stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon.